Howard Stern's long career has been extremely well documented. After all, the guy spent countless hours talking about his life on the radio for 40 years. But as it turns out, there are still a few things even the greatest shock jock of all time doesn't like talking about. Here's the untold truth of Howard Stern. Weird Howard? In 1982, Stern, Robin Quivers, and producer Fred Norris were just starting to pop on the radio in Washington, D.C. So maybe that's why Stern recorded 50 Ways to Rank Your Mother, an album full of Weird Al style song parodies, which is not his finest moment, which is saying a lot. The title track is a parody of Paul Simon's 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, and other songs include I Shot Ron Reagan. I shot Ron Reagan and pleaded insanity. I'm cocoa is a dead bug. I swear I am. You're the human poison and everything. And oh, 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 OJ, baby, you can rent a car, which is about OJ Simpson, still over a decade before his murder trial, being Hertz's spokesman. I'm OJ Simpson, you can call me OJ. There's also comedy bits like a fake ad for an album by Neil Young's Cat, and a filthy take on Leave It to Beaver called Unclean Beaver, which is what the album was retitled for its reissue in 1994. Stern vs. Leno There doesn't seem to be much love lost between Howard Stern and Jay Leno these days. Just the mere mention of Jay Leno's name makes me want to vomit. I don't like this guy. I don't disguise it. And probably what irritates me the most is people in show business are afraid to say how much they dislike Jay Leno, but I am not. In 2012, he called Leno a spineless maggot, which almost cost him his gig on America's Got Talent. But back in the early 90s, the two seemed to have had something resembling a cordial relationship. Stern made a few highly rated appearances on Jay Leno's Tonight Show. Wanting to raise the stakes for his appearance in 1995, the shock jock brought two bikini-clad porn stars, Nikki Tyler and Janine Lindmulder, on stage with them. He staged The Tonight Show's first lesbian kiss and urged Leno to spank one of the women. Has there ever been a spanking done? Would you like a little of that tonight? <laughs> Leno was visibly uncomfortable through the segment and eventually walked off the show, which was edited out of the later broadcast. After Stern's 2000 appearance on Leno, their relationship seemed to permanently sour. I work for NBC television now, and I'm not speaking to Jay Leno. They asked me to go on his show. I go, no, he did Dave wrong. Don't mess with Texas. Days after singer Selena was murdered, the Howard Stern show played some of her music with gunfire in the background. After that, Stern had some pretty nasty things to say about her music, and threw in some insults of Hispanic people for good measure. Spanish people have the worst taste of music. <laughs> they really do. Alvin and the Chipmunks had more soul. <laughs> the comments so incensed Aloy Cano, a justice of the peace in Harlingen, Texas, that he issued a warrant for Stern's arrest, citing disorderly conduct. Technically, police could have arrested Stern if he set foot in Texas during that time, but that's still probably light compared to what Selena fans would have done to him. Push to suicide? TV sitcom Different Strokes made Dana Plato a child star in the 80s. Most people remember the show as a launching pad for Plato's co-star Gary Coleman, but the popular sitcom made the whole cast famous. But like fellow Strokes vet Todd Bridges, Plato fell on hard times after Different Strokes ended and battled substance abuse. On May 7, 1999, Plato appeared on The Howard Stern Show to discuss her troubled life, drug use, poverty, and run-ins with the law, but claimed to be sober for 10 years at that point. Have you been, uh, been in psychotherapy? Have you been on any medication or I anything like that? I have been sober for the longest time. Really? Oh, it's over a decade now. No kidding. No joke. When callers accused her of sounding high, she offered to take a drug test to prove it. I just took the test to defend my character drugs. with you. I'm clean. You're doing drugs. Producer Gary Dillabate snipped a few hair samples from her with the intention of sending them to the lab. Stern later said that after the show, the former child star begged to have the hair samples back because she didn't want them tested. The following day, Plato visited her mother in Moore, Oklahoma for Mother's Day. While there, she overdosed on the painkiller Lortab and the muscle relaxant Soma. Police later ruled her death a suicide. Coworker feuds. From Bugs Bunny and Space Jam to Futurama's Fry, voiceover superstar Billy West is an industry legend. Shut up and take my money! He also provided voices for The Howard Stern Show back in 1989, doing impersonations of celebs like Johnny Carson, Johnny Cochran, and Lucille Ball. Lucy, I just want to ask Why you... Why do you keep calling me? Uh, we're just so thrilled. Why? In 1991, West also started working on Nickelodeon's new animated series, The Ren and Stimpy Show. The show's creator, John Chris Felucci, was fired by the network in 1992 and he wanted West to walk away too, but he refused. In 1995, Stern surprised West by bringing Chris Felucci on the show. It got uncomfortable. When you got fired, Billy stayed with the cartoon and took over your voice. 
Did you really expect Billy to leave? Uh, yeah. Uh, you did. <laughs> you did expect Billy to leave. Yeah, well, he told me he was going to. That same year, West left the show after failed contract negotiations with Stern's then-employer, Infinity Broadcasting. In 2009, West appeared on the Sirius XM show, Jackie's Joke Hunt, hosted by fellow former Stern staffer, Jackie Martling. When asked if he'd go back on Stern's show, West said he wouldn't and might write a book about why he left. Meanwhile, John Melendez started as a Howard Stern Show intern in 1988. The story goes that Stern wanted Melendez hired because of his stutter, which led to the nickname Stuttering John. Eventually, Stern sent Melendez to red carpets to ask celebrities uncomfortable and confrontational questions. The recurring bit turned into a fan favorite, and Stuttering John became a full-time employee. I think you're a schmuck. That is, until 2004 when he left The Howard Stern Show to become an announcer slash on-air personality at The Tonight Show. It's The Tonight Show with Jay Leno! Hey John, shut up, will ya? You got the job! Four years later, Melendez went on The Adam Carolla Show and talked about how Stern never paid him fairly. He also said that Stern didn't like his employees taking on outside gigs to make ends meet. I love Howard and all, but my biggest beef has always been on that show that, you know, they just don't take care of people financially. Following that interview, Stern unleashed a half-hour rant on his Sirius XM show, calling Melendez an ungrateful and talentless hack. Stern even went as far as to say that he no longer wanted his then fiance Beth Ostrowski, being friends with John's wife. In the summer of 2016, though, Stuttering John announced on his podcast that he and Stern have finally reconciled. Finally, for almost 10 years, comedian Artie Lang was Stern's sidekick when Jackie Martling left, and the pairing seemed perfect. Unfortunately, Lang's long-documented problem with addiction proved to be too much, and in December 2009, he was asked to take time off. Weeks later, Lang attempted suicide. After his rehabilitation, Stern thought it best he didn't return. In an interview from June 2016, Lang stated that Stern continued to be there for him through many of his toughest years, but they don't speak any longer. Lang has attempted calling Stern numerous times with no response. I called him four times, probably three or four times and left voicemails, uh, and he never called me back. Why? Lang thinks it stems from the moment when Stern asked him if he thought Stern looked like a pelican. And Lang said yes. Lang recalled on the Enough About Me podcast, When he said, do you think I look like a pelican? And I said yes, there was no going back. Considering everything Stern said and done over the decades, all it took to hurt his feelings was being compared to a pelican. Howard, you and I have a lot in common. We do, we do. I like to take a four hour dump every morning too. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw. And leave us a comment to let us know what Howard Stern moment shocked you the most.